Buona Asafiwe, which is glory to God in Swahili. The team is back from Africa, from Mombasa. And uh, man, it, it, was, it was an awesome experience. Um, as a child, I always wanted to go to Africa. And uh, the fact that God uh, allowed for me to have the opportunity to go uh, by virtue of using my ministry, Mount Gilead, Full Gospel International Ministries, and all of the members there who have um, sowed tithes and offerings to allow those of us that went uh, to go is just beyond measure. I, I can't even begin to express to you uh, what that means to me and, and the, the opportunity that I was given. Certainly cannot um, go forward without uh, uh, definitely giving a huge shout out to Pastor Julian Dangerfield and Shalom. Outreach Ministries, uh, which was the, the actual ministry that our ministry uh, partnered with to go and uh, Pastor Dangerfield and uh, Pastor Doris Cruz um, just led us seamlessly through this experience and oh my God, what an experience it was. Also want to just a uh, big shout out and big uh, just, um, just want to really just say in a big way, thank you to uh, my new friends from Mabasa and from Nairobi, um, whom I've met, and I hope that you all get to see this so that you, um, you, you know and hear that I have such an appreciation for you and for my new family. Listen, God gave me a word on August the 19th, uh, and that word was, was ungodly distractions, to be wary of ungodly distractions and to keep our minds and our hearts focused on God. And he has not released me from that place yet. I, he just keeps ministering more and more to me. And, and I think in this season where we are, um, it's important that we pay attention to what uh, the distractions are. They come in so many shapes, forms, and fashions. And we have external distractions. We've got internal distractions. And so a lot of the times we, we become distracted by things that we see. We know that Satan is a god of this world and that he manipulates and uses the natural things which affect, uh, which affect our flesh to distract us, to pull us away from the will of God. And so people, um, as I just list a few, can be distractions. Um, they can be very well-meaning, uh, but can be indeed distractions, pulling on your time, pulling on your peace, pulling on your resources, pulling on your finances. Um, you know, and just, just a pull in general. And maybe the need for them is very, very real. But you need to check in with God and make sure that you're in the place where God wants you to be as it pertains to that person's life. That you're not actually operating in that person's life as a, a demigod or a semi-god or whatever we want to call it. Because a lot of times people will attach themselves to you and begin to look at you as God and not looking for God who is the should be the author and finisher of their faith and, and the, the provider of all of their needs. He's Jehovah Jireh. Um, we need to be wary of negative conversations as it pertains to people. The things that we talk about. What are you talking about? You need to keep your mind focused on the thoughts that are going in and out of it. Casting down all imaginations and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And taking those thoughts into the obedience of Jesus Christ. We need to make sure that we're staying purposely, fo purposefully focused on those things that we're talking about. And so if we find ourselves in a conversation uh, that's dealing with uh, another person and that person is being torn down, whether they made a mistake, whether or not they've done something that was just completely wrong and they should have known better, it's not our job to tear them down. If God said in Romans 8 and 1 that there is now no condemnation in, the, in Christ for those that are that love him or are called according to his word, I think that's how it goes, um, then how do we find ourselves? How do we find ourselves in the position or in a place where we can put condemnation on a person because of the mistakes that he's made? We all live under the same grace. We live, all live under the same amount of 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 mercy that God gives, he extends to everybody. He says his mercies are new every morning. And so we need to be mindful of the conversations that we have. We need to be mindful of what we're watching on TV and how those things distract us by way of planting seeds in our thoughts and in our imagination. There's magic on TV. There's sex and immorality on TV. There's lying and stealing and, and, and all kinds of abuse and neglect 
And all these things are painted in our imaginations by way of the enemy who controls the communication, the airways, so that he's able to, to infiltrate our minds. And then from that infiltration, change our belief systems, which then take seat and take root in our hearts. And from there begins to purposefully drive our bodies in the direction where our souls, our spirits are then being led by our flesh and by our imaginations and by the things of this world, rather than it being the other way around, which was the way that God purposed it, that our spirits would be leading our bodies and our flesh and our bodies and flesh would be subjected to the spirit, mortifying the flesh, mortifying the flesh every day. Um, we're supposed to die every day. That's what Paul said. So uh, we need to be mindful of the things that we take into our minds, the things that we see through our eyes, the things that we hear, the things that we um, say, the things that we come into contact with, that we touch, using those five senses, which are the gateways into our souls. Even food. Sometimes we use food as a distraction when we should be focusing on what God would have us to do right now. God might be trying to speak to us through a certain amount of pain. Some people use food as emotional um, support. And when they're feeling pain or when they're feeling loneliness or when they're feeling something that um, is very uncomfortable, they turn to food. And sometimes in those moments, God is saying, turn to me, yield to me, allow me to be the nurturance, the support, um, the help, the God that you need. I can come in and I can fill those empty places. I can fill those voids with my love and you won't have to hunger after the food or the, the, the natural thing any longer. Along with food, of course, is alcohol and drugs and sex and anything else that fills an empty place in our souls and in our spirits. Um, distractions can also be uh, around finances. How are you spending your money? There's nothing that God has given us on this earth, I've come to find this and I believe that it's true, that belongs to us. Anything, whether it's little money, if you have little money, don't let that be a distraction for what God has purpose for you to do in this life. There are other things that you can do to sow into the kingdom, to edify the kingdom, to bring light to someone else's life by way of your works, your hands. Know that God needs your body. He needs your hands, he needs your heart, he needs your willing spirit to go forward and to accomplish his will. And he can't do that if you're tired and burnt out and if you're being distracted by all these things that I've already mentioned. If you're being wound up and, and, and you know, brought into a place of anxiety because you're trying to figure out, you know, how is this? God said that he's sufficient to meet all of our needs. Likewise, if you have an overflow of funds, my question is, is how is that overflow and benefiting the kingdom of God? How is it benefiting anyone's life right now other than your own? Are you bringing light into dark places with the resources that God has allowed you to have? Think about also the health. It could be your health. It could be the health of another person. If your health is under attack, if someone that you love has experienced a health situation and their health is under attack, even if it's unto death, don't take your distraction. Don't take your mind off God. Don't allow that distraction uh, to, to take you from a place where you begin to focus on the sickness and the illness which is not of God, don't allow that to, to pull you from the things that God would have you to be focusing on, which is that he is Jehovah Rapha. He is the God that heals us. He is El Shaddai. He's the God that's more than enough. He's Jehovah Nisi. He's our banner. He's our protection. He's our, our victory. He, so we need to focus on him in these areas. Um, make sure that we are focusing on uh, keeping our thinking in, in right order making sure that we keep our uh, the, the level of disbelief that tries to enter our mind in check. Uh, we want to make sure that, you know, because Satan is always trying to whisper negative thoughts that are counterproductive to what God would have us to believe and to know. Um, and so you might see somebody and you might feel that, that little feeling of jealousy or envy if that person is doing something that you would like to be doing or, or for whatever the reason might be, or some other type of destructive thought uh, that enters your mind. Um, make sure that you immediately, as I said, cast those thoughts down. We want to make sure that our thoughts are like God's thoughts, that they're like Christ's thoughts, and that when we see our sisters and brothers, we have a word of, of, um, of edification. We have a word, a word of encouragement for them. Um, the word of God says to trust in the Lord with all your heart, to lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. So when you don't know what to do, when you, when you find yourself feeling in ways that you know are not in alignment with God, 
then just say, God, I trust you. Tell me how, to, how I should respond in this situation. Tell me what to say. And if I don't know what to say, God, then just allow me not to say anything and just continue to cleanse me, to purge me, to make me new, to wash me, God so that I can become daily more than, there's no way in the world that you can spend time in God's presence and invite him in and you not be changed. So expect daily to be changed by God. Choose to bring your mind and your body under the subjection and under the obedience of Christ um, so that he can change your language. Um, God tells us in Jeremiah 33 and three, that if we call unto him, that he will answer us and he will show us things that, uh, that are great and mighty, the things that we don't know. So when you begin to bring yourself into alignment with God, get ready to have that unexpected blessing. Get ready to have your life transformed in ways that you can't even yet begin to imagine. Get ready to wake up and find yourself one morning watching an African sun raise up or rise up over the Indian Ocean. That's what happened to me last week. I had no idea that I would be able to, to, to eventually realize my dream of coming up. Um, and going up to Africa. Many of you know we've known each other from childhood. I grew up in Lynchburg, uh, grew up at College Hill Apartments. You know, there was no reasonable way for a great portion of my life that I could find any reason to believe that I would make my way to Africa, at least from a realistic uh, uh, standpoint of what I could do for myself. But with God, all things are possible. And if you align yourself with his will and his purposes, all things are possible for you too. The last thing that I want to say is this, um, for women, your role is vital. Your role is vital in God's salvation plan. Your role is vital in the deliverance of your families. There are women and children and even your husbands and men that are watching your walk. They are watching right now how you actually demonstrate this love that you say that you have for God and the purpose and the plan that you say that he has for your life. They're watching you. And generations will either follow in your example or they will, they will detour and, and be off course because of the example that we paint, that we paint, that we put before them. There are people right now who are watching you that need to know that God is real, that need to know that faith is worth standing for and fighting for that they can go and renew their minds and ask God to restore their hearts on a day-to-day -day basis. God, empty me out and fill me again with more of you, with a new anointing, with a new grace, with new mercy. Because every day the warfare out in this world is new and the strategy changes, although the devil doesn't have, have a, 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 the ability to, he's not a creator, in other words. But he does change the strategies from, different, from time to time. And so we have to stay plugged into God that God can hide us and both tell us the things that are going to come so that we can prepare and arm ourselves through the power of the Holy Spirit. I think that that's enough for today. Uh, bless you and um, look forward to talking to you all again soon.